Excitation of the heart The cellular mechanism that initiates the cardiac action potential lies in the sinoatrial node. It is located in the superior posterolateral wall of the right atrium, immediately below and slightly lateral to the opening of the superior vena cava. However, the sinus nodal fibers connect directly with the atrial muscle fibers, so that any action potential that begins in the sinus node spreads immediately into the atrial muscle wall. Resting membrane potential of the sinus nodal fiber between discharges has a negativity of about negative 55 to negative 60 millivolts in comparison with negative 85 to negative 90 millivolts for the ventricular muscle fiber. The cause of this lesser negativity is that the cell membranes of the sinus fibers are naturally leaky to sodium and calcium ions and positive charges of the entering sodium and calcium ions neutralize some of the intracellular negativity. Cardiac muscle has three types of membrane ion channels that play important roles in causing the voltage changes of the action potential. They are fast sodium channels, slow sodium calcium channels, and potassium channels. The first is a Na plus channel, which opens at approximately negative 60 MV. As sodium ions enter the cells of the SA node, the membranes are depolarized and gradually the membrane potential reaches the voltage range of a calcium channel for transient calcium current. This channel opens at about negative 50 millivolts. As calcium enters the cell, the membranes depolarize further until the long-lasting calcium channel opens at negative 40 millivolts. In the SA node, the final depolarization and propagation of the action potential comes from calcium channels. As the cell depolarizes towards zero millivolts, the potassium channels open. Potassium ions leave the cells and repolarization begins. This is the difference between the SA nodal action potential and any other, as current flowing through open voltage-gated potassium channels repolarizes the cells and the membrane potential returns to negative 60 millivolts. The atrial conductive system is organized so that the cardiac impulse does not travel from the atria into the ventricles too rapidly. This delay allows time for the atria to empty their blood into the ventricles before ventricular contraction begins. It is primarily the AV node and its adjacent conductive fibers that delay this transmission into the ventricles. The impulse after traveling through the internodal pathways, reaches the AV node about 0.03 seconds after its origin in the sinus node. Then there is a delay of another 0.09 seconds in the AV node itself before the impulse enters the penetrating portion of the AV bundle, where it passes into the ventricles. A final delay of another 0.04 seconds occurs mainly in this penetrating AV bundle which is composed of multiple small fascicles passing through the fibrous tissue separating the atria from the ventricles. Special Purkinje fibers lead from the AV node through the AV bundle into the ventricles. Except for the initial portion of these fibers where they penetrate the AV fibrous barrier, they have functional characteristics that are quite the opposite of those of the AV nodal fibers. They are very large fibers and they transmit action potentials at a velocity of 1.5 to 4.0 m per second. A velocity about six times of that in the usual ventricular muscle and 150 times that in some of the AV nodal fibers. This allows almost instantaneous transmission of the cardiac impulse throughout the entire remainder of the ventricle muscle. It should be recalled that everywhere except at the AV bundle the atrial muscle is separated from the ventricular muscle by a continuous fibrous barrier. This barrier normally acts as an insulator to prevent passage of the cardiac impulse between atrial and ventricular muscle through any other route besides forward conduction through the AV bundle itself. After penetrating the fibrous tissue between the atrial and ventricular muscle, the distal portion of the AV bundle passes downward in the ventricular septum for 5 to 15 millimeters towards the apex of the heart. Then the bundle divides into left and right bundle branches out that lie beneath the endocardium on the two respective sides of the ventricular septum. 
Each branch spreads downward towards the apex of the ventricle, progressively dividing into smaller branches. These branches in turn course sideways around each ventricular chamber and back toward the base of the heart. The ends of the Purkinje fibers penetrate about one-third of the way into the muscle mass and finally become continuous with the cardiac muscle fibers. Do not forget to like the video and subscribe to our YouTube channel.